Welcome back to our channel. Today, we're diving into one of the most fascinating and often misunderstood topics in the Bible, the origin of African people according to the Bible. Have you ever wondered where different people groups, especially those of African descent, come from according to the scriptures? What does the Bible really say about the origins of African people, and how does this connect to some of the most powerful and ancient civilizations in history? In this video, we're uncovering the biblical lineage of Kush, Mizraim, and Put, exploring their influence on early civilizations like Egypt and Mesopotamia, and revealing how the Bible emphasizes the unity and diversity of all humanity. This isn't just about ancient history, it's about understanding our shared human story, a story that connects us all. Stay with us as we journey through the pages of the Bible, shedding light on how these early nations shaped the world as we know it. If you're curious about the biblical origins of different races, or if you've ever questioned the deeper meaning behind the diversity of humanity, then you're in the right place. Before we dive in, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, and tap the notification bell so you never miss an insightful video. We value your thoughts, so don't forget to leave a comment below and share this video with others who might be interested in exploring these profound truths. Your support helps us continue bringing you content that inspires and informs. Let's get started and discover the biblical origins of African people and their profound impact on history. This is a journey you won't want to miss. Our journey into the biblical origins of humanity begins with Noah and his three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. These three men, along with their families, were the only survivors of the great flood that covered the earth. God made a covenant with Noah, promising never to destroy the earth with water again, and blessed Noah and his sons, instructing them, be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth. Genesis chapter 9 verse 1. This command set the stage for the repopulation of the earth, and from these three sons came the different nations and peoples that we know today. Shem. Shem is traditionally considered the ancestor of the Semitic peoples, including the Hebrews, Arabs, and Assyrians. His descendants are listed in Genesis chapter 10, verses 21 to 31, which includes notable figures like Eber, from whom the term Hebrew is derived. Shem's lineage is significant in the biblical narrative as it leads to Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and ultimately, Jesus Christ. This lineage emphasizes God's covenant with his chosen people, which is central to the biblical story. Japheth. Japheth is regarded as the progenitor of many European and some Asian peoples. His descendants are listed in Genesis chapter 10 verses 2 to 5, which include the Greeks, Medes, and Scythians, among others. Japheth's line is often associated with those who spread out into the islands of the nations. Genesis chapter 10 verse 5, referring to the coastal lands of the Mediterranean and beyond. This expansion illustrates the fulfillment of God's command to spread and populate the earth. Ham. Ham, the youngest son, is particularly significant to our discussion today because his descendants connected to African people. Ham had four sons, Cush, Mizraim, Put, and Canaan, Genesis, chapter 10, verse 6. These names are not just biblical references, they represent real people groups and ancient nations known to history. The lineage of Ham is associated with some of the earliest and most powerful civilizations, including Egypt, Mizraim the kingdom of Cush and the Canaanites. Now, let's start from Cush, the father of African nations. Cush, the eldest son of Ham, is a foundational figure in the Bible, representing the lineage that gave rise to some of the most powerful ancient civilizations in Africa. Cush is often associated with regions south of Egypt, primarily modern-day Sudan and Ethiopia. The descendants of Cush were renowned for their distinct dark skin, cultural richness, and significant influence in the ancient world. In the Bible, the name Cush is frequently synonymous with Ethiopia. The Hebrew term Cush directly refers to regions inhabited by people of African descent, particularly areas along the Nile River such as Nubia. The region of Cush was known for its wealth, military strength, and advanced society, making it a significant power in the ancient world. 
Isaiah chapter 18 verses 1 to 2 describes the land of Cush as a place of powerful warriors, saying, Woe to the land of whirring wings along the rivers of Cush, which sends envoys by sea in papyrus boats over the water. This passage emphasizes Cush's advanced naval capabilities and its far-reaching influence, reflecting its prominence in trade and military prowess. The Cushites are mentioned throughout the Bible, not just as a people group but also as key players in various historical narratives. Their distinct dark skin is highlighted in several scriptures, underscoring their unique place within the biblical narrative. In Jeremiah chapter 13 verse 23, the prophet asks, Can the Ethiopian Cushite change his skin or the leopard his spots? Neither can you do good who are accustomed to doing evil. This verse is often cited as a clear reference to the Cushites' distinct physical appearance, directly linking them to the African continent and acknowledging their unique ethnic characteristics. Another significant mention of Cush is found in Numbers, chapter 12, verse 1, where Moses' wife is described as a Cushite woman. Miriam and Aaron, Moses' siblings, criticize him for marrying her, reflecting some tension due to her ethnicity. However, God defends Moses, highlighting that racial and cultural differences do not hinder God's plan or his favor. This story demonstrates the Cushites' integration and influence among God's people, emphasizing their respected status. The kingdom of Cush, or Nubia, was one of the most ancient and influential civilizations in African history. Situated south of Egypt along the Nile River, this kingdom was known for its powerful kings, skilled warriors, and cultural achievements. At its height, the kingdom of Cush conquered Egypt, establishing the 25th dynasty, often referred to as the Cushite dynasty, which ruled both Cush and Egypt. The Bible acknowledges the military strength of Cush, particularly in 2 Chronicles, chapter 14, verses 9 to 15, which tells of Zerah the Cushite leading a vast army against King Asa, Judah. Although King Asa's forces were outnumbered, Asa prayed to the Lord, and God delivered the Cushites into his hands. This narrative not only underscores Cush's military might, but also highlights their far-reaching influence in biblical history. Ezekiel chapter 30 verses 4 to 5 also references the Cushites during a prophecy of judgment against Egypt and its allies, including Cush. This passage illustrates how interconnected Cush was with other powerful nations further solidifying its importance in the biblical and historical context. The Cushites were not only warriors, but also innovators, builders, and traders who significantly influenced their region. Their empire controlled crucial trade routes, linking the African interior with the Mediterranean and Middle Eastern worlds. The wealth of Cush, derived from its access to gold, ivory, and other valuable resources, contributing to its powerful and enduring legacy. The significance of Cush in the Bible extends beyond its military and political might. Isaiah chapter 45 verse 14 speaks of the Cushites bringing tribute, saying, The products of Egypt and the merchandise of Cush, and those tall Sabians, they will come over to you and will be yours. This passage suggests that the Cushites were not just warriors, but also wealthy traders whose influence reached far and wide. Zephaniah chapter 3 verse 10 further highlights Cush's place in God's redemptive plan, stating, From beyond the rivers of Cush my worshippers, the daughter of my dispersed people, will bring me offerings. This prophetic verse points to a future where the Cushites, alongside other nations, play a role in worshipping God, illustrating the inclusivity of God's kingdom. The biblical narrative of Cush reminds us that African nations were integral to ancient history, with Cush's descendants leaving an indelible mark on the world. Through their advanced civilizations, skilled leadership, and interactions with other powerful nations, the Cushites played a crucial role in shaping the ancient Near East. Next, we turn to Mizraim, the ancestor of the Egyptians. Mizraim, another son of Ham, is one of the most significant figures in the Bible because his descendants established one of the world's most iconic civilizations, ancient Egypt. The name Mizraim is often directly translated as Egypt in the Bible, 
reflecting his direct connection to the land known for its grand pyramids, advanced knowledge and powerful dynasties. The Egyptians were pioneers in science, art, religion and governance, shaping much of the ancient world's development and leaving a legacy that continues to fascinate humanity today. Mizraim is listed in Genesis chapter 10 verses 13 to 14 as the father of several groups, including the Ludites, Anamites, Lehabites, Naphtuhites, Pathrusites, Kaslohites from whom the Philistines came, and Kaphtarites. These groups represent various people within and around ancient Egypt, emphasizing that Mizraim's descendants were not just confined to Egypt, but also influenced the broader region of North Africa and the Eastern Mediterranean. The civilization of Mizraim Egypt flourished along the Nile River, which provided fertile land, water and resources essential for sustaining large populations. This geographical advantage allowed Egypt to become a hub of agriculture, trade and cultural exchange. The Egyptians' sophisticated understanding of mathematics, engineering and medicine positioned them as one of the most advanced societies of their time. Throughout the Bible, Egypt plays a prominent role in the unfolding story of God's people. From the time of Abraham to the Exodus and beyond, Egypt is depicted as a powerful and influential nation. Notably, Egypt is often referred to as the land of Ham. In passages like Psalm chapter 105 verse 23 and 27, then Israel entered Egypt. Jacob resided as a foreigner in the land of Ham. They performed his signs among them, his wonders in the land of Ham. These verses underscore Egypt's connection to Ham's lineage, highlighting the shared heritage between Egyptians and other African peoples. The Bible also highlights Egypt's grandeur and influence through various prophecies and historical accounts. In Isaiah chapter 19 verses 1 to 4, God speaks of Egypt, demonstrating its prominence. The Lord rides on a swift cloud and is coming to Egypt. The idols of Egypt tremble before him and the hearts of the Egyptians melt with fear. This passage not only emphasizes Egypt's spiritual challenges, but also confirms its status as a powerful and well-known civilization. Egypt frequently served as a place of refuge during times of famine and crisis. In Genesis chapter 12 verse 10, we read that Abraham went down to Egypt to escape famine, marking one of the first significant interactions between the Hebrews and the Egyptians. Later, Joseph, a descendant of Abraham, was sold into slavery by his brothers and rose to power in Egypt, becoming second only to Pharaoh, Genesis 41. His strategic planning saved Egypt and surrounding nations from severe famine, demonstrating Egypt's pivotal role in the broader biblical narrative. However, Egypt was also a place of conflict, particularly in the story of the Exodus, where the Israelites were enslaved under harsh conditions. The oppression of God's people led to dramatic interventions by God, including the ten plagues and the miraculous parting of the Red Sea. Exodus 14 The story of the Exodus is one of the most well-known biblical events, underscoring Egypt's role both as a place of refuge and as a symbol of oppression. Egypt's advanced civilization had a lasting impact on the Israelites and the broader world, the Egyptians were known for their contributions to science, art, and religion. They developed one of the earliest writing systems, hieroglyphics, and made significant advances in medicine, mathematics, and architecture. Many of these innovations influenced neighboring cultures and continue to be studied today. Biblically, Egypt was often seen as a place of temptation where the Israelites were drawn to foreign gods and practices. Ezekiel, chapter 20, verse 7, describes God's command to the Israelites, saying, Throw away the detestable things your eyes feast on, every one of you, and do not defile yourselves with the idols of Egypt. This verse highlights the spiritual tension between Egypt's polytheistic practices and the monotheistic faith of the Israelites. Despite these tensions, Egypt was also a place where God's power was displayed dramatically, showing his sovereignty over all nations. In Hosea, 
chapter 11, verse 1, God recalls his protection over Israel, saying, When Israel was a child, I loved him, and out of Egypt I called my son. This verse not only reflects on the Exodus, but is also echoed in the New Testament when Jesus and his family flee to Egypt to escape King Herod. Matthew, chapter 2, verses 13 to 15. This connection further emphasizes Egypt's recurring role as a place of both refuge and fulfillment of prophecy. Mizraim's descendants were part of the broader African narrative, connecting the rich history of Egypt with other nations descended from Ham like Cush and Put. This interconnectedness is a reminder that Africa was not isolated in the ancient world, but was a key player in the biblical story. Isaiah chapter 19 verses 19 to 25 offers a profound prophecy about Egypt's future role in God's plan, declaring, In that day there will be an altar to the Lord in the heart of Egypt. The Lord will strike Egypt with a plague. He will strike them and heal them. They will turn to the Lord, and He will respond to their pleas and heal them. This prophecy envisions a future where Egypt, Assyria, and Israel are united in worshipping God, highlighting the inclusivity of God's kingdom and His redemptive plan for all nations, including those with African heritage. Mizraim's legacy as the ancestor of the Egyptians underscores the deep historical and spiritual connections between the biblical world and African civilizations. The Egyptians' contributions to science, art, and religion set them apart as one of the most influential cultures of the ancient world. And their repeated presence in the Bible highlights the significance of Africa in the biblical narrative. Now let's move to Put, a North African lineage with military influence. Put, one of the sons of Ham, is traditionally associated with regions in North Africa, particularly areas corresponding to modern-day Libya, or lands west of Egypt. The descendants of Put are recognized in historical and biblical contexts as a distinct group that played a notable role in the ancient world, especially in military contexts. Put's descendants were believed to have settled in what is now Libya and surrounding regions along the Mediterranean coast of North Africa. This area was known in antiquity for its strategic importance due to its location along major trade and military routes. The people of Put were often associated with other North African and Middle Eastern groups, indicating their integration into the broader cultural and geopolitical landscape of the ancient Near East. The Bible frequently mentions Put in the context of military alliances and warfare, highlighting the involvement of Put's descendants in significant conflicts. For instance, Ezekiel, chapter 30, verse 5, lists, put alongside Cush, Lydia, and other nations as allies of Egypt, who would face judgment during God's pronouncement against Egypt. Cush and Put, Lydia, and all Arabia, Libya, and the people of the covenant land, will fall by the sword along with Egypt. This passage underscores Put's association with powerful military coalitions and their involvement in regional conflicts. Similarly, in Ezekiel, chapter 38, verse 5, Put is mentioned as part of the coalition of nations led by Gog that would rise against Israel in the prophetic end times scenario. The inclusion of Put in these military contexts suggests that the descendants of Put were known for their warrior culture and alliances with other prominent powers of the time. Put's people were likely involved as mercenaries or allied forces in various military campaigns, aligning with powerful nations like Egypt and Persia. Their skills in combat and their strategic position in North Africa made them valuable allies in regional conflicts. The military prowess of Put's descendants contributed to their reputation as a formidable people group in the ancient world. In historical accounts outside of the Bible, North African regions associated with Put were known for their cavalry and skilled fighters, further supporting the biblical depiction of Put as a warrior nation. These regions often supplied soldiers to larger empires, reflecting their integral role in ancient military networks. While not as extensively documented as Kush or Mizraim, Put's connection to North Africa situates its descendants within the broader African narrative. 
The descendants of Put represent a lineage that contributed to the military history of the ancient world and were part of the diverse tapestry of African and Near Eastern civilizations. Their role as warriors and allies in various conflicts highlights their impact on the regional dynamics of their time. Put's legacy, though less prominent in biblical texts, remains an important piece of the story of the descendants of Ham, illustrating the reach and influence of African lineages in shaping the ancient world. Now the descendants of Ham, particularly Cush, Mizraim, and Put, are directly connected to the African continent and the origins of African people. These lineages gave rise to some of the earliest and most powerful civilizations in history, including Egypt and the Kingdom of Cush. The biblical account underscores the significant contributions of these African lineages, highlighting their important role in the tapestry of human history. The Bible paints a powerful picture of humanity's unity and diversity, emphasizing that all people, regardless of race, culture, or language, originate from one family. This foundational concept highlights God's design for a diverse yet interconnected human race, underscoring that our differences are not meant to divide us, but to enrich the human experience. The Bible clearly states that humanity originates from a single ancestor, affirming our shared heritage. In Acts 17, 26, the Apostle Paul addresses the people of Athens, declaring, from one man he made all the nations that they should inhabit the whole earth, and he marked out their appointed times in history and the boundaries of their lands. This verse underscores the idea that all human beings, regardless of their differences, share a common ancestry through Adam and Eve, and later through Noah and his sons after the flood. As we reflect on the biblical origins of African people, it's crucial to understand that the Bible presents a unified human story. All nations, including those of African descent, have a place in God's redemptive plan. The contributions of Cush, Mizraim, and other African lineages are a testament to the rich, diverse tapestry of humanity. Galatians chapter 3 verse 28 reminds us, There is neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free, nor is there male and female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. This verse encapsulates the heart of the Bible's message, that in Christ, we are united beyond our differences. In conclusion, the Bible provides a powerful narrative of unity and diversity, showing that African people have deep roots in the biblical story. From the mighty nations of Cush and Mizraim to the inclusion of African individuals in the early church, the scriptures highlight the profound impact of African-descended peoples throughout history. Understanding these origins helps us see that our differences are not dividers, but beautiful aspects of God's creation. As we embrace our shared heritage, we celebrate the unique contributions of every people group, recognizing that we are all part of one human family. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the Bible's account of the origins of African people. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video to continue exploring these profound truths together. Your support helps us bring more content that inspires and informs. Until next time, stay blessed and keep seeking wisdom.